Okay, so let's uh, talk about decision tree pruning. So in pruning, uh, let's talk about C4.5 first. So, so C4.5 recursively makes choices, these choice, one of three choices for pruning. And when I say recursively, I mean it does it over and over and over again. Okay, just after it does one, it does it again, does it again. Okay. All right, so the first option is to leave the tree as it is. The second option is to collapse part of the tree into a leaf. And the leaf that has the most frequent label in the data, um, the leaf, the leaf that you're creating, it has the most frequent label in the data going to that part of the tree. So let me just show you what that is. So in, on, the, on the left part, I have the tree, I left it alone. That was option one. Option two, I'm gonna take that part of the tree and collapse it into a leaf and just choose the label that is just the most popular going to that leaf. And then the third option is to replace the whole a whole part of the tree with one of the subtrees corresponding to the most common branch in the split. So in other words, um, I, I, I'm actually taking that part of the tree that I had, I'm replacing it with a subtree that happened to be the most common branch uh, in that direction. Okay, so those are the three options. And it actually uh, has to reason about which of the three options it's going to pick. Now, the way C4.5 does it is it computes upper bounds on the probability of error for each option. And in particular, it uses standard upper confidence bounds on, the prob on these probabilities that come from the binomial distribution. And why the binomial distribution? And it's because each data point is considered a, an independent draw, and each data point has a yes or no associated with it. So these are like Bernoulli random variables. And as we know, a bino the binomial random variables is like a sum of Bernoullis, right? So that's why these, um, that's why we're considering the binomial distribution. And then they use alpha equals 0.25 for the upper confidence bound. Uh, why, po why 0.25? I don't know. It's, it's a heuristic, like I said. You know, they just did something or other. Okay, so let's talk about how we, um, let's talk about these upper bounds here. So I don't want to turn this into like an introductory statistics lesson. So these are these are just standard upper confidence bounds from um, from from the binomial distribution here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a new data set. This is uh, again restaurants. Uh, each observation is is on the row, and then there are only two features here, and then the label is the third column there. So it's just crowded in price. And as you can see, there's only one negative label in the whole data set. So what should we do? So the question is, should we split or not? Let's consider a split on crowded. Option one, you leave the tree as it is. That's the tree. It has six positive and zero negative in one leaf, nine positive and zero negative in the other leaf, and then R1 negative landed in its own leaf. Okay, so of course the leaves vote yes, yes, and no. And then I'm computing upper confidence bounds for these probabilities. So these are um, upper confidence bounds on the, pro the probability to be positive. And um, like, I, like I said, I'm just gonna put the probabilities there. I, I don't wanna turn this into how do you create these, probability, th these uh, upper confidence bounds, but one thing I can do is show you code that will check to make sure that these upper confidence bounds were computed properly. Okay, so this is me issuing the um, binomial distribution CDF uh, um, command in MATLAB. And I put in the zero and the six, and I put in the answer, which was 0.206. And what I should get out of this, if I did it right, is a 0.25, because alpha is 0.25. And as you can see, it's pretty good. And then again, I should get a 0.25 for, for this one and for that one. And as you can see, these numbers make sense. So even if you don't, even if you don't um, believe me, you can at least believe MATLAB that these numbers all work out correctly. Okay, so I have my upper confidence bounds. Now, um, let's take the average of them. And it's of course a weighted average and I weight by how many points go into each branch. And that's my average. Okay, now option two. 
which is the same as option three, because this is a very, very small tree. Option three, two and three, is to prune the tree to a leaf. Okay, so now all the data get predicted to be positive, and I missed, I made one mistake because there was a negative. And so let's take a look at um, the upper confidence bound there, which happens to be point, around 0.157. And again, I put in a little check just to make sure that it was right around 0.25 there. And it, it, it did seem to work out. Okay, so when I, you know, take the average, again, since there's only one leaf, <laughs> the average is quite simple, it's just the 0.157. All right, so now I'm just gonna put back in the um, upper confidence bound from when I actually did the split. And as you can see, the upper confidence bound is lower in choices in options two and three. So actually this pruning criteria would prune this all the way back to a leaf, okay? And we actually want that because that would help prevent overfitting. We really don't want that singleton in its own leaf. There we go. Okay, so, so now hopefully you can understand why this, is, why this pruning criteria makes sense because um, it, um, if you have fewer points in the leaf, that'll increase the upper confidence bound and so you'll be less likely to, make, to, to choose that as the option for pruning. It prefers to have more, more um, points within the leaves. Okay, so other questions you might have on decision trees. Where did that 0.25 come from? Like I said, phyloheuristics. Okay, so how do you know which, oh, I should mention though, it's a pile of heuristics, but it's been tuned over many years and it really does work. It's, it's actually shockingly, shockingly good considering what it is. Okay, how do you know which subtrees to consider for options two and three? I don't know, it's <laughs> like I said, choose it randomly, it's, it's, it's all heuristics. Uh, can you change it? Yes, you can change it. Go ahead, try it out. <laughs> like I said, it's been fine-tuned over many years, but you might be able to fine-tune it further if you so desire. That's not particularly what I want to do with my time, but if that's something you want to do, go right ahead. Are the trees optimal? Most certainly not. And in fact, um, there will be many circumstances when um, cart trees, for instance, predict you know, all one class when there is certainly a tree available that um, is better that doesn't predict all one class. Also, you don't even know how close to optimal the trees are. So even if CART produces an optimal tree, you would have no way to know that because you have no bounds or no distance to optimality anywhere in it. So um, what I will talk about in the next couple of lectures are um, some of the answers to these questions. And um, Later, I'll talk about sort of the modern decision tree methods that actually do um, that do fully optimize the trees and don't use these. There's no alpha equal 0.25. There's no splitting criteria, no pruning criteria. It's just full-blown optimization. Okay, thanks.